Hey, what's going on, everyone? What's going on? Man, officially 11 weeks in a polygraph away, 11 weeks in a wake up call away, 11 weeks in a check in away from um, the Phoenician Classic, which is a WMBF IMBF Pro uh, Pro Am this year, going down September 4th, 2021. All right, going down. <laughs> man, I got a special guest for you guys today. Got a cool, really good guest for you guys coming on today. My man, Zach, um, a.k.a. better known as Cerebral Palsy Beast. He will be on today. He will be on today. Jake, I got to bring you on a little bit later, man. I got to bring you on a little bit later, Jake. It'd be great to get you on here and chit-chat because I know you're coming out to help out with the show. My man, Jake, good looking, is coming out from Sacramento to help me out with the show he will be security at the door, you know. <laughs> he will be security at the door. So my man Jake, really good. Really uh, uh, want to thank you like a million times, man, for just coming out, flying out, and, and helping out with the show. We always have some great staff that always comes out and help out with the show. Like we have some, like our staff, like I, I always have kudos to our staff. And the reason being is because everybody that pretty much comes to help out with the Phoenix Classic, either they're so used to doing contests, they're so used to helping out with contests, like they know all the ins and outs of contests. So it makes it that much easier for the um, athletes. So that's the one thing that I really enjoy is to have like a solid, 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 solid um, staff on deck that um, that knows each and every, just knows each and every, each and every aspect of a show. So man, I can't thank you enough. Can't thank you enough for coming out. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, we got a couple of great shows on the West Coast leading up into the Phoenicia Class. The Phoenicia Class is going out September 4th, as I mentioned before. We got a couple of great shows that's happening before then. Like, since the, this Phoenicia Class is a pro round, we got um, pro men's physique and pro bikini um, divisions that we're doing. Um, we got some really great shows that's leading up into it. So if you're thinking about becoming a pro in men's physique or a pro in bikini, Got some great shows coming up. Uh, this weekend, actually, uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, is the IMB of Tulsa Natural that's going down. And then July 24th, we got two great shows going down July 24th. And one in the Northwest, one in the Southwest. All right. Two great shows on July 24th. Uh, the CC, uh, the CC uh, Phillips Classic going down to Eugene, Oregon in the Northwest on July 24th. Um, the show that's going on in the Southwest in San Diego, California, is the uh, IMBF SoCal Uproar going on in San Diego. I will be in attendance at the SoCal Uproar. So if you want to meet me in person, like I got an opportunity to meet some really cool behind people that I chatted with on here live or I chatted with um, through um, um, private messaging. Uh, I think I think it's called DM and, you know, I'm, I'm not up with the with the lingo, all the lingo, <laughs> but I met some really cool people. Um, and when I was at the, um, 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 the IMBF, um, Columbia class up in, um, Seattle, Washington. So I got a chance to meet some of the people that, you know, that we had got a chance to, uh, chit chat with. So it was really cool. Really, really cool to meet some of those people. Um, but yeah, uh, September, uh, uh, July 24th, uh, I will get another, you get another opportunity to like to, if you're in San Diego, I will be at that show. You want to get, sit down and chit chat with me, rap with me. I will be there. All right. Uh, another great show leading up into the Phoenician Classic uh, is August 7th, the IMBF Oklahoma City Classic going out in Oklahoma City. Another great show. And then the final show that I will be in present on on the West Coast is uh, August 21st, IMBF uh, Natural uh, Natural Central Valley Championship going out in Fresno, California, which is two weeks before the Phoenician Classic. So um, uh, August 21st, that will be the kind of like the last show on the West Coast that I'll be present at where you get an opportunity to meet me before you actually see me working my butt off hard as beep <laughs> before the, uh, actually during the Phoenician Classic, which is September 4th. Um, another great, the very last show before the Phoenician Classic, though, is a brand new show. Brand, brand new WNBF, IMBF show that's going down in Dallas, Texas. It's the IMBF South Central USA uh, uh, South Central USA, which is going down in Dallas, Texas on August 28th. Now, the, those, that is the very last show on the West Coast that's going to happen before the Phoenician Classic. If you're trying to, you know, if you're thinking about turning pro in men's physique or if you're thinking about turning pro in, in, in bikini, those are some great West Coast shows that's happening before the Phoenician Classic. Now, to get a full listing 
of all the shows in the WNBF, IMBF, please go to um, uh, World, uh, go to, uh, blah, 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 I always mess this up. <laughs> go to um, WorldNaturalBB.com. Go to WorldNaturalBB.com and you'll get a full listing of all the shows that's in the WNBF, IMBF. All right. Um, man, as um, far as updates, what's going on with Phoenician Classic as of right now, still in the same position that I was in Monday, uh, still reaching out to vendors. Um, still trying to find a fashion designer so that way we can have, so they can feature their clothing during the fashion show portion of the show. Um, other than that, like other than that, I'm still reaching out to vendors and sponsors and, and seeing where everyone is at. And the one thing that I'm discovering here, everyone is really in this kind of like the same position. Like, you know, everyone's trying to recover from last year and we're all trying to, you know, work together to make, try to figure out something to make it happen. So, it's all contract negotiation stuff right now. You know, normally it wouldn't be, uh, it normally on the normal circumstances, like it wouldn't even be a huge contract negotiation thing going on. Uh, this year is just a little bit abnormal because of the previous year. So it is what it is, you know, nothing I really can do about it. Just go along with the flow and continue to uh, secure vendors and sponsors like I normally would do, you know. Um, it's just always nice to be able to secure the same ones that we have every year. And the reason being is because uh, they're familiar with me. I'm familiar with them. And not only that, I know exactly what they're going to bring. And I know exactly uh, 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 what type of um, um, I know exactly um, the quality of service that they're going to bring to the show. You know, so we aim for high quality all the time, each and every time. So that's one of the things that's one of the reasons why you know, we're kind of particular about um, uh, what type of vendors and what type of vendors we have there at Phoenicia Classic and who we're going to work with. You know, we just want to make sure everything's everything's first class for you, for the athletes and not only first class for the athletes, first class for the families as well. So, um, man, I'm supposed to have a really cool special guest, um, Zach, coming on, but I think he said it was cooking. So I'm waiting for him to pop in here. But in the meantime, and oh, there he goes. There he goes. Zach, I'm going to bring you on right now, boss. Zach, bring you on right now, my man. Perfect timing. I was just saying that I was... What's up, Zach? I just sent you an invite. If you go ahead and click it. The, there we go. What's hey, going on, hey, brother? What's up? So, how are you doing, Chris? Good, brother. Good to see you, man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I was just saying, like, I was waiting on you to come in because I knew you were cooking. <laughs> yeah, I was Kevin, I, I'm doing... I'm trying to keep in the bonnet. I'm trying to I'm trying to down my fats by like five or ten grams or less than I I'm usually doing because I'm five and a half weeks out from my pork heart man. I need to I need to get my fat down there, you know. I absolutely. I know what you mean. So, Zach, what I wanted to bring you on, man, because I'm very interested, like, very intrigued with your story, man. Like, very intrigued. So, I guess my first question is this. How did you get into weightlifting, period? So, let's run it back to, let's run it back to 18, 18 years ago. So, okay. I was adopted from Portland, Oregon, when I was six years old, right? From a lady named Carol Theodos. Now, she passed away from cancer seven years later. That tells you something, Chris. That wow. tells you that she wanted me. She yeah. was really sick on her deathbed. She wanted me. So... She passed away from cancer when I was 13, right? Mm -hmm. So, are you familiar with the Big Brothers Big Sisters program? Yes, I am. Okay, so it's not around Oregon anymore. So, my big brother, Luckily, he was a personal trainer at the YMCA, you know, in Oregon, right? So he, he asked me if I want to be a certain brother, and I accepted, right? And then he started, he started going to the gym with me, training, uh, showing me the ropes and Afterwards, the rest became history, man. I mean, 
So, and lifting weights honestly helped ease the pain of the loss of my mom. You know, man, that's beautiful, man. That is absolutely beautiful. So, like, when you so once you got into um, lifting weights, at, um, once you got into lifting weights and became, I'm pretty sure you became a uh, Big Brothers and Little Sister sponsor. I'm pretty sure of it um, because that was kind of the route you were going on. Once you uh, got into weightlifting and stuff like that, did you did you transition directly into bodybuilding at the weightlifting? Once weightlifting, or did you do something else beforehand? You know, funny thing. So when I was ten years so I t I did taekwondo. Okay. Uh, and then I did horseback riding. Shortly afterwards, I also been a walker, wheelchair, crutches, braces, and a helmet. You know. Oh my and, god! Dude. <laughs> yeah, I got out of my. I got out of my helmet and walker a year before freshman year because I went to Sheldon High School, man. 1,400 kids don't right. need to be running over any feet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I graduated high school, <clears throat> Spe some Special Olympics people, I went into this transitional class called CLP, okay. Community Life Program. They help you find an apartment, they help you cook, they help, they help people with developmental disabilities uh, manage their money. So there was a seminar. Some people from Special Olympics came to that seminar. Was anything had source or whatever. And, you know, there was no powerlifting back then, right? Mm -hmm. So I, did, I, I went out for the swim team okay. at 135 pounds. No muscle mass whatsoever. Right? So a year or two went back, went a year or two uh, of that. And then the coordinator of the Special Olympics called me and we called, chatted and she's like, he's like, hey, Zach, powerlifting just got approved by the state of Oregon. You should go out for it, man. I saw your muscle mass. You're short. So I went out for it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite good at it, you know. My numbers were in the squat 135, deadlift 135, bench 135. I was sick and tired of losing, you know. So mm -hmm. it's something about it. I... At 24, I got really serious about powerlifting, right? Mm -hmm. I went from 135 to 182.5 in like a span of five or six years, right? Jesus Christ. And then I, I took a bunch of gold on because my max deadlift was 450. My Zach, stop. Hold on. Stop. Did you just say 450? Yes, 450. My max squat, 265. My max bench, 250. So other than that, other than the Special Olympics, I, I power lifted for the WABDL, World mm -hmm. Association of uh, Water Association of Bench Press and Deadlift and the USPA. Okay. okay. But I didn't do the 450 deadlift in a Special Olympics meet. I did it at a meet 
estoy yo seco en estos hoy again, okay? Uh -huh. I, yeah, 450. My, yeah. <laughs> and then let's fast forward to that. So a friend of mine at the time uh, asked me if I wanted to step on stage. He would step on stage with me, but that never happened. Hey, I still stepped on stage. Yeah, you did. I lost, I lost, I lost 50 pounds in seven months. It was hot as hell, but I did. I was 134.2 last year with 6% body fat. I went to Aaron Orton's gym two weeks ago to get my body fat tested. He could not believe it, man. I put on 10.1% uh, of lean muscle mass in not even a year. So, so funny thing about that, I'm not, I didn't even tell you this. So this is going to be a tough story, but I'm going to do it anyway. So right, I'm all ears, man. Give it to me. My, my wife was, my wife was 10 weeks pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. We were expecting a little girl, right? Mm -hmm. We were so damn excited, right? I still don't, I still won't forget the day. She came, this is when COVID was going on. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be with her. She came home crying. I, I thought the worst, okay? I'm not going to lie. I thought the worst. Mm -hmm. She lost the baby. I cried like a little baby because, you know, I thought I didn't want to be a father, but I wanted to be a father. Man, I was so devastated. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't train. I didn't train for 10 weeks. I hate whatever the hell I wanted. I didn't care. But February, uh, for 10 weeks, but February was around, right? I looked at, I looked at my, I looked at my bands and my weights and I thought to myself, you know, get your ass back to the gym, Zach. You need to work out. So that same day I did, right? I was, Sorry, I'm still cooking. It's okay. was, what are you cooking anyway? Uh, tilapia. I'm okay. tending Lavoni it and doing a lot of tilapia. Okay. In the 90s, Kevin Lavon ate nothing but tilapia. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after you lost, after you suffered a, a huge loss, um, you, get, you decided to kick, kick things back into high gear and start training again. Um, how many weeks out from your from the from your show did you decide to start like training again? Eighteen weeks. Eighteen weeks. Yes, and I I was about I was about one fifty six at eighteen weeks out. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh I didn't lose any muscle mass. Uh, so. Two, so two weeks ago, when I got my body fat tested, 6.9% body fat at, at 10, 6.9% body fat at 146 pounds. Aaron was really stunned. The, Aaron was really stunned because... You you know you're a natural athlete. It's really tough. It's yeah, tough. tough. As, yeah, it's tough as hell to 
put on that amount of muscle naturally and not even a year. So after her loss of her baby girl, guess what happened? So a day after Kate Brown, the governor of Oregon, shut down the dens. Well, that never, that didn't make matters any better. I went in a deep depression, like mm. a deep one. And then, God, you know, I met Aaron 10 years ago, right? I met him at a power lifting meet. He was, <sighs> sorry. He went, he was a promoter of, he was the promoter of a powerlifting meet. Uh -huh. Didn't know anything about him. It was $20, so I'm like, what the hell, I'm going to test my luck, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so fast forward 10 years later. I got a message on I got a message on Messenger, right? Uh huh. Erin is like, hey, are you home? I got a mess I I didn't read that message, right? I got a knock on my door. It was Erin. He gave me okay, the girl's name is Lillian. He gave me a hand-stitched portrait of Lily Pats with flowers. Her name was Lily and Renee. Wow, man. That's, that's, <laughs> Aaron's a good dude, man. He's a super I, good dude. I didn't talk about it. I just acted. I didn't give a shit about COVID, you know? I just hugged him. I didn't say anything. I was skeptical of hanging it up. But I hung it up later. And Zach, lean into the lean Zach, lean towards the camera because you you're fading. Your voice oh, is fading. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, I hung up the picture this morning after my, yes, after my sword stand. <laughs> anyway, and then I, I thought to myself, you know, Lily and Martin have wanted me to sit at a open. So why don't I just start a dream? She got my file back, you know? Right. That's the whole reason why I'm doing this show. De I dedicated this show, the Colombian classic to Lily, and I'm dedicating the Cecil Phillips to Lily. Oh, and man, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, Zach, I'm going to tell you straight up, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be tuning in to... Everything that you're doing, brother, because it's so freaking amazing. You know, what I mean, just your your drive, your determination to you know to be the best. And I'm tuning in. Like when the CC Phillips goes down, on even though I'll be in San Diego on the 24th, I will be shooting messages like, "Hey, how's it doing?" Because <laughs> I'm tuning in, bro. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to see. I'm looking forward to like I won't be able to see it in person this time, but I'm looking forward to seeing you um, do your thing again at the Cecil Phillips on video or over Instagram or something. So I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait to meet you, see you again in person because I know I will. <laughs> We're bound to meet again. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, this is a really tight knit community. It really know? is. Back to Aaron, you know, I can't thank him enough for everything he's done. I mean, he helped with the loss of our daughter. And, you know, he became more than a uh, closing coach. He became family. 
he became my friend. He became my brother. The the reason why I go to boxing class now is yeah to get better, but that environment, you right. know, that we pull. I used to sell Cutco cutlery, those really expensive knives. So I really care about establishing those relationships. I really do. Man, I couldn't have said it better. I couldn't have said it better. Well, Zach, I'm going to let you get back to cooking. And, brother, I'll be on the lookout for you. I will be on the lookout for you. I'm done cooking. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, eat up, champ. Eat up, champ. Yeah. I'll talk yeah. to you soon. Okay, thank you so much, Chris. All right, not a problem, brother. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. There you have it, man. My man Zach tuned in to give us just an insight into his world. Now, like I said, what made it, what made things super special for that is because Zach has had cerebral palsy all his life. And for this dude to be able to move the type of iron that he moves and look the way that he, that he does and train the way that he does, you know what I mean? It's like, it motivates me to like, it really motivates me to go, when I'm having a crappy day because I'm training for Spartan races and when I'm having a crappy day and I don't want to go run out in the heat, I literally go, okay, bruh, like, it could be worse. Get your butt out there and go run. <laughs> so... It's always a pleasure to write, to sit down and chat with Zach and get just to get his insight, man. It's like the dude is phenomenal, and, I, and I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for Zach. Kristen, love, I know I tried to get you here last time. I'm going to try it again. So if you can accept this request, if you accept this request, Kristen, we're going to get you on here. Now, one thing about Kristen, she's so cool. She's so, so awesome. Like, she's been, <laughs> if she's available. Oh, there she go. <laughs> I'm driving, but I'll be home in one minute and I can park. <laughs> it's okay. So, the reason why I wanted to bring you on is because, like, one of the cool things I love about promoting shows is, like, when athletes tag us in, in with their workouts or tag us with anything, because I love to reshare your stuff. And uh, you tag, you've been tagging us with, all, with your workouts and everything like that, and it's been so freaking awesome because like i see some of your stuff and then some of your comments and it allows me to kind of chime in with a little joke or two here or there <laughs> now tell me why you're driving how the hell you get into competing how, how did this happen <laughs> well it's kind of funny um first of all how do i follow that i mean seriously but <laughs> i know right dudes a beast <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Industry. I teach group fitness classes. I've been a gym group fitness manager for a couple years in the past. And um, I wanted to do a show nine years ago. And I trained up into about 12 weeks out. And I just didn't want it enough. And I threw in the towel and I said, this is good enough. And I've 
thought ever since then, what if? What if I would have just done it? Why didn't I just do it? And so I've decided no more what ifs in my life. Instead of what if I did it, I'm going to say, remember that time when I did that show? And so that's that's where I'm at. So here we are. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm like, I'm really ecstatic that you actually chose us as your first show because we get to spoil you now. <laughs> I, you know what? I've heard that. I've heard that. I have a couple of friends that have done your show, and they say it's, it's one of the best. So I'm excited. Awesome, 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 awesome. So, okay, so this first show that you were supposed to do nine years ago, and you decided, like, nope, not for me. <laughs> nope, not for me. What was what was the deciding factor that made you go, nope, not for me? Um, honestly, I just I just don't think I wanted it bad enough. I didn't. I felt really good. I had trained up to the point, I, and even right now, like I feel really good about where I am at my fitness level and the way I look, the way I feel. And so I didn't feel like I needed to push myself any harder. But then I think it's, again, it's that time looking back. It's that, what if? I want to see what my body is actually capable of instead of wondering. So I, that's that's my that's my reason right now is I want to show myself, okay. to myself and my son, that you know if you have a goal and you work hard enough and you commit to it, do it there's no what if i did it it's i'm going to do it and here we go awesome awesome well i can't like i can't thank you enough and please keep tagging us in your workout videos because like i'm getting the kick out of them <laughs> <laughs> i'm good. totally having a blast with your workout videos <laughs> <laughs> so keep tagging me i will I'm, i will keep resharing um Man, I'm having a blast with it. And I didn't realize this was like going to be your official first show actually getting ready. And let me tell you, girlfriend, you're on the right path. So, like, you're kicking butt. Okay, you're good. on the right path. That's good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we, now, here's, now, here's one thing that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do a post interview, all right, after the show's over with. Because you're going to have one or two feelings. Either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. And I want to find out which. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling I'm a little nervous that I'm going to love it, and this is going to be my new thing, so we'll see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, love. Well, I'll let you get in the house. I know you're just getting home. Thanks for dropping in, and I'm glad that I didn't catch you when you get culling your hair again. <laughs> I know. Nope. It's all good today. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye, love. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> there you have it, guys. First time compared to Kristen stopped in just to give us like a little insight of how she got into this realm of competing. So we had two great interviews today, guys. One from Zach, one from Kristen. Man, two opposite ends of the spectrum, which is what I love the most. Is like just just people coming in from two opposite ends of the spectrum with different stories. So guys, man, anytime you want to like share your story of how you got into bodybuilding, please, when you see me on here, I'm on here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday doing live interviews with anybody that wants to tell the story. And I don't really care what organization you compete with. As long as you're a natural athlete, you got a platform with me. Simple as that. <laughs> All right, I can't make it any simpler. So other than that, 11, 11, and, uh, 11 and a half weeks, or I should say 11 weeks in the polygraph, 11 weeks in a wake-up call away from the Phoenician Classic. Um, man, tune in again Saturday. Uh, it'll be Saturday at 11.30. Tune in Saturday at 11.30, and I will have hopefully some more interviews lined up and Hopefully some other people just want to pop in and just share with me. Just pop in and share. So that's all I got for you guys, man. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hey, have a, have, a, have a blessed, positive rest of your week. Hey, and happy Father's Day to the fathers out there if I don't get the chance to say it on Saturday. Happy Father's Day, early Father's Day to the fathers out there as well. All right, guys, be easy.